What's up, YouTube? This is Mathwiz97, and welcome to episode number 75 of my WWE 2K15 Universe Mode. And we're here with another edition of Tuesday Night Main Event. And uh, as we can see, kicking off the episode, we have Jay Uso with Jimmy Uso in his corner taking on Tyson Kidd in singles action. A matchup between two new tag teams here to the series, as it is Curtis Axel and Damian Sandow joining forces to take on the team of Fandango and Adam Rose. Brie Bella and Nikki Bella, the Bella Twins, using some of that twin magic to defeat Natalia and Emma in tag team action. One half of the tag team champions, Connor, defeats Justin Gabriel in singles action. And in the main event, we have the big guy, the human wrecking ball, Ryback, taking on Mexico's greatest export, Alberto del Rio. That is set to be an epic main event for this episode. I hope you're all hyped, excited for it. Hope you're looking forward to that main event, but why wait? We've got some epicness about to unfold here in this opening matchup between Jay Uso and Tyson Kidd. And this is gonna be an interesting matchup to watch because we're looking at two superstars who are part of tag teams. And now we can see how they will fare in singles action, how they can do on their own. This is a good opportunity for these two competitors to try to stand out more as individuals, show their own unique abilities as opposed to their partners. And especially when you're somebody in a position like Tyson Kidd is, where the international airstrike, they're struggling a bit. They've been in a bit of a rut, to say the least in recent months. Tyson Kidd, he, I mean, we've seen Kidd and Gabriel, they've been unsuccessful as a tag team. They've competed in various singles matchups over the past month, and that doesn't seem to be working out too well either. I mean, the international airstrike as a whole are just kind of struggling. And Tyson Kidd, he needs a good opportunity here tonight. He's, he has to put on a good performance because you know, when you're as a part of a tag team, you will your style will develop more uh, based on the person you're working with, based on the partner you have, and you know then when you break off and try to compete in singles action, you could perhaps struggle a little bit because you have to adapt your style accordingly. Because well, when you're in a tag team, you can kind of bounce off your partner. You can tag in and out, keep each other fresh, and ultimately. Even just little things about your moveset, your tendencies will change. They'll try to adapt more based on the partner you're working with. Whereas if you're in singles competition, you don't have that second person to kind of work off of, and you have to be ready to fare to fight on your own. And just there, even just little things that you'll notice. Certain moves you'll hit differently. Uh, based on, you know, who you're working with, perhaps, you know, say, even if it's something like you set up a suplex into some sort of a splash, you know, um, something like that where, you know, you might be used to hitting that suplex a certain way to set up that splash, but now you're just on your own and you're not really setting anything up. you got to uh, set your own moves up. You're not setting up somebody else. It's just a different style of matchup. The tag team division, it's just... I don't know, it's a bit more fast paced depending on who's in the ring and when you're, you know, just the, that's the whole thing about tag team wrestling, it's there as a, uh, something to add variety, it's, it's a different sort of, it's a different sort of thing to watch, a different stage for these competitors to work under, as we see a nice power bomb by Jey Uso, but in this singles matchup tonight we get to see these two superstars stand out more as individuals, try to develop their own sort of individual movesets, their own styles, try to, this is a good opportunity to give them a stage to see what they can do on their own, and as I was saying with Tyson Kidd, if he could pick up a victory in a match like this, especially now at the point where the international airstrikes seem to be in a bit of a rough patch in their careers, if they were to split up and Tyson Kidd, he's got this momentum behind him, then he would be all the better for it because he would come out uh, the greater of the two, he would be the stronger link in the team, and he, that would propel him to even greater heights over on SmackDown, as, you know, he could 
perhaps try to propel himself into the Intercontinental Championship division and even further beyond that. Whereas Justin Gabriel would kind of be left in the dust if Tyson Kidd could kind of outpace him with these kind of matches. Oh, look at that move by Tyson Kidd as he just hung Jey Uso out to dry there. But Jey Uso's foot was under the bottom rope and that's going to force a rope break. And speaking of rope break, I do want to take a little bit of a point here to discuss some of the new 2K16 gameplay that was released. And I, I don't want to get too caught up on this, but it did. there were a couple things that kind of caught my eye. One of them being the new pin and submission system. I, I think the new submission system looks pretty cool, to be perfectly honest. I think, you know, the whole idea of just kind of being in a circle and you have your bar and you gotta like move around and try to catch your opponent. It's almost like a little mini game and it's hopefully gonna be uh, more balanced than the breaking point. And then of course when it comes to pinfalls, rope breaks, that's something they changed and hopefully that could be pretty cool in terms of presentation wise. Uh, but yeah, I am impressed with the gameplay what was shown thus far. Finn Balor's entrance of course was amazing. Can't wait to bring him into the series. Don't know how yet, but even if I did know how, I wouldn't tell you because spoilers. But let's focus back in on the matchup now as Jay Uso caught the kick from Tyson Kidd, but now it's Tyson with a counter, tosses Jay over there into the turnbuckle. Kick to the gut now from Tyson. He goes up to the second rope. Look at this springboard sunset flip as he rolls him up here, but a kick out by Jay Uso as the action. When you're seeing two, two uh, high flying, fast paced superstars like this, sometimes kind of tough to keep up. Stumbling over my words. I can't even keep up with the action now. But look at this. Oh, what a running forearm there from Jay Uso taking down Tyson Kidd. Beautiful strike there from Jay. As now he's looking to perhaps turn the tides in his favor. Tyson Kidd rocketed over there into the turnbuckle. And look at this. Oh, Jay Uso just shoving Tyson Kidd down. Head back of his head bouncing off the second turnbuckle. Oh, and look at this, Jey Uso, look at that, shades of his good old father Rikishi right there, as Tyson Kidd, well, he's on Dream Street right now, Jey Uso, oh, there's no way he can make that, Jey Uso was looking for the splash, but Tyson Kidd's way out of range, he's gonna have to take a different approach here, oh, speaking of Rikishi, look at this, Jey Uso, planting Tyson Kidd right on the top of his head with that pile driver type maneuver and now Jey Uso he's got Tyson Kidd in position going to the top rope look at this Uso splash as he hooks the leg but before that we got to get a replay look at the height on that splash into the cover two count Jey Uso picks up a victory for Tyson or picks up a victory over Tyson Kidd a victory for the Usos here tonight and I was talking about what a victory would mean for Tyson Kidd but what a, what a victory means for Jey Uso here tonight. Not only does he build himself some momentum, but that's gonna carry over transition into the Usos as their tag team momentum. As far as that goes, they could perhaps be the next challengers to face the Ascension for the tag team titles. I know the Usos have been looking mighty impressive as of late. Even in the tag team tournament, though they did not win, they did a fantastic job. And I think they could perhaps be the next big tag team. But now we're going to move on into the complete opposite end of the spectrum here. As we are going to see two brand new tag teams being formed right here, right now. As we have not only the pairing of Curtis Axel and Damian Sandow, but as well as that we have Adam Rose and Fandango joining forces. So, question I got for you, down in the comment section below, what, start thinking of some names, some tag team uh, names, what are we going to call these guys, as we've got the team of Damien Sandow, Curtis Axel, and the team of Adam Rose with Fondango, so, there are probably some things people could come up with, but uh, as, as per usual, just kind of brainstorm down in the comment section below, what are, what are your ideas for a potential tag team name, and if I find one that sticks, I'll go with it. If it sounds cool, if it's catchy, then we're going to run with it. But, um, yes. This is a good opportunity for all four of these men to kind of get a new jump start in their careers. And we have a bit of a 
you know, the talent in this matchup do span quite a bit here in Universe Mode. I mean, we have somebody, the likes of Curtis Axel and Damian Sandow as well. Both have been around for a while in this series. Fondango came in a little, a little more recently following that. Uh, Sandow and Axel both being here uh, since WWE 13. Fondango, though, he didn't come around until the second season. And then Adam Rose... Well, he made his debut late second season, and then he kind of disappeared for a while. But then he came back, obviously, in this third season, WWE 2K15. So, Adam Rose, he's by far the newest superstar in this matchup. So he's going to have the least amount of experience. But then, they're going, to, they're going up against a team like Sandow and Axel, who, in terms of singles competition, they, they have experience. That's one thing they do have. Um, but this is... You know... If you struggle as a singles competitor, often, uh, if possible, if you can find somebody that you know, you're able to kind of mesh styles with, you're able to find somebody who's in a similar position, have uh, share similar goals, then what you can do is probably try to team up, see if not only, I mean, you gain yourself a new s sort of place on the roster, because tag teams, you know, in the past here in Universe Mode, there haven't been an abundance of tag teams to kind of choose from. I mean, I think we're slowly getting there, but in the past, you know, when you've had teams like the Wyatt family just dominate the tag team division, and then before that it was the Shield, there weren't really a whole lot of tag teams to speak of. Uh, so, what we could probably see in something like this, Axel and Sandow, if they team up, and the same for Adam Rose and Fandango, if they team up, it would probably be easier for them to find a spot on the match card each and every week as opposed to you know staying in their singles paths because so far that hasn't that seems to not have worked out as well as they would like so perhaps joining forces can just kind of create that I don't know shock factor or just something you know to really get the authorities attention be like hey you know we mean business and that's, this is a good opportunity for not only to try to you know uh, change up their careers a little bit, try to get themselves going on the right path, but as well, they get to show their stuff here tonight as a tag team, see, you know, kind of test the waters, how can these two work together, and will it be a successful experiment, or are either these two men, or either these four men, I should say, will they have to go try to find a new tag team partner, could, they, could there perhaps be a uh, not-so-good alliance between the two? But right now you can see Adam Rose was backed into a corner, but now he counters. Axel sent into the corner instead. And Adam Rose, tornado DDT to Curtis Axel, taking him down. And now drops the elbow right into the heart of Curtis Axel. But yes, Adam Rose, especially, I think out of these four men, well, between Adam Rose and Fondango, I mean, they really haven't made too much of an impact since their debut. I mean... Rose, he had his debut against uh, The Miz, and he won that matchup, and then he came back several months later and beat The Miz, and after that, he just kind of started losing a lot of matches. So Axel, or not Axel, Adam Rose has certainly kind of struggled. Oh, but wait a minute, speaking of Axel, look at that double team maneuver by Axel and Sandow. A reverse double suplex with uh, the ropes for leverage. Definitely an innovative move right there. Could perhaps be looking at the next breakout tag team in this matchup, whether it be Adam Rose and Fondango or Sandow and Axel. What a huge knee by Sandow. Sandow now gonna go for the cover. Could have Rose down and out here, but no, just a two count. And especially with somebody like Damian Sandow, he has been around for quite a while, but he's never really gotten that opportunity to show just what he's made of. He hasn't really been able to he doesn't get featured a whole lot, and that's definitely been what has limited Sandow's abilities here in the series. He's kind of been held back, held down, and he hasn't been able to showcase what he truly can do. And for all we know, Sandow could perhaps be a future World Heavyweight Champion in the making. He just hasn't gotten his opportunity to shine. But so far, what we're seeing from Sandow, I'm impressed. I mean, he's putting on a good performance at the moment for the amount of time he's been in this matchup. I mean, it's been about a minute or two, but nonetheless, Sandow is... I mean, look at this. Look at these innovative moves by Sandow just smashing Adam Rose's head into the turnbuckle there. 
as he had him hooked with like a full Nelson. Sandow, he is bringing out some innovative offense here so far in this matchup. And look at this, a cartwheel by Sandow. Well, I mean, that, that bravado might have just given Adam Rose the opening to attack as he's firing up a comeback. Look at this, off the ropes, spine buster from Adam Rose. And Sandow now backed into a corner. Oh, Adam Rose, look at this. Oh, there's a kick to the gut, and we've seen this before. Adam Rose, he's looking to go for a ride. Oh, a Bronco Buster to Damian Sandow in the corner. And Adam Rose, you can see he's feeling whimsical. He's really feeling the emotion from the crowd here, or lack thereof, in Adam Rose's case. But you can see he's definitely building up a full head of steam here. As he's got Sand... Nope, countered by Sandow. Rose could have perhaps been looking for the party foul, but Sandow shut him down. And look at Sandow, side rush and leg sweep as he takes down Adam Rose. Oh, and Sandow, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see the Kobito Aki yet? Also known as the elbow of disdain as he can exit right there, elbow across the chest of Adam Rose. And now it's Sandow's turn, perhaps looking to finish Adam Rose off here. Sandow, oh, counter from Rose. Oh, nice elbow right to the jaw of Sandow. And now a running bulldog from Adam Rose. And Rose now, I mean, he's got to tag out to Fondango. Things are not looking too good for Rose. He's taken, he's definitely taken some damage in this matchup as Fondango tagged back into this thing. Nice kick to the gut of Sandow. Look at this, scoop slam. Taken down the intellectual savior of the masses as Fondango just hammers away at the face of Sandow. And now a leg drop right there. Not quite the leg drop from the top rope, but nonetheless still effective. There's Fondango right now. Tossing Sandow over there into the corner. Oh, and now a bit of bravado from Fondango. A bit of arrogance being shown here, but that could give Sandow the opening he needs. But no, Fondango manages to regain control here as now he's going to the top rope. Fondango looking to go high risk here. What's he gonna hit here? Oh, what a splash onto Sandow. Into the cover, hooks the leg, two count. Oh, but Sandow just, just kicks out at two. Sandow just managing to keep himself alive. And Fondango now waiting in position. Look at this. Oh, what a move right there. A falcon arrow, a spinning falcon arrow at that as Sandow just gets planted into the mat. And now Fondango picks him up. Oh, but a counter by Sandow. Beautiful counter by Sandow. And now Fondango, he's able to counter with one of his own. Oh, and he drop kicks Curtis Axel off the ropes here. Damian Sandow, he's up on that top rope. This is not good. Not where Sandow wants to be. Oh, this is a very dangerous spot here, folks. Fondango. Damien Sandow up on the top rope. Oh my god. Uh, again, that Falcon Arrow off of the top rope this time. Wow, Damien Sandow. He, he could be done here, folks. But Fondango, he's not capitalizing. He's giving Damien Sandow too much time to breathe. Oh, Fondango, you might just miss your chance. And that's exactly what happened here. Curtis Axel tagged into the matchup. And he tags Fondango. And now does the same to Adam Rose, knocking him off the ropes. And now Curtis Axel, look at that beautiful neck breaker. Brilliant execution there by Curtis Axel. And now he's going to the outside. Well, is he looking to get a piece of Adam Rose? What a kick to the gut there by Axel. Just making sure Adam Rose stays out of this contest. And look at this. Axel, oh, the slingshot, the whiplash there off that snapmare. And now Curtis Axel, he's measuring Fondango, setting him up here, looking to put him away. Oh, and he's looking to do it in style, paying homage to his father with the perfect plex. And that is it, folks. Curtis Axel and Damian Sandow pick up the victory with that perfect plex. And I gotta say, Axel and Sandow, they put on quite an impressive performance here tonight. And I would have to say, you know, I was impressed by, at the very least, I mean, I think all four of these men put on a good show. Fondango as well, he had his his shining moment there, but he just kind of let let the moment get to him. He let his ego take over, and that's what cost him. I mean, Fondango, it looked like he was on the verge of putting Sandow away, but he just, he got too caught up in showboating, 
and he gave Sandow enough time to get to his partner, tag in Axel, and well, it was, it was all she wrote from there. But nonetheless, this is a huge victory for Sandow and Axel. Could they perhaps be the next breakout tag team in universe mode? I guess only time will tell. But we're gonna have to wait and stay tuned to see what the future has in store for those two men as we now move on to the main event of the evening. The big guy, the human wrecking ball. This is Ryback and he's hungry. He's ready to feast here tonight. And well, Ryback, he's had his issues just more recently with the, the Bulgarian brute, the super athlete Rusev, who has just, I mean, he set his sights on Ryback. And hey, when, when you're one of the top dogs on the show, I mean, Ryback, he was the former longest reigning intercontinental champion of the series. And now, I mean, he's, he did move over to Raw, which has definitely taken him back a little bit. But nonetheless, he's still a dominant force in that ring. And Rusev, he wants to make, it, make his presence known. So what do you do? You go after the biggest dog in the yard. And that, and unfortunately for Ryback, he was the biggest dog in the yard, or at least that's what Rusev thought. And now, Ryback, he's a marked man. Rusev, he's got his sights set on just destroying the big guy. But if I know Ryback, if any of us know Ryback, I'm sure that he is more than willing to uh, have, a, have that fight with Rusev. He's looking forward to the challenge. And in fact, this might just increase his drive to get stronger, to get better in that ring, and to progress closer and closer to that elusive World Heavyweight Championship that has just been just been inches away from his grasp uh, over on SmackDown. As now, wait, what the heck? The Big Show has entered the ring. It, referee, is this some kind of disqualification? Oh, Big Show! Big Show attacking the big guy what the what what and now Del Rio's down I did I miss something but anyway Ryback with the cover but not even a one count what just uh, I I okay uh, I wow I don't even I don't even know where to go from there I mean Big Show just what what does Big Show want with Ryback well I guess I did just previously just finish up stating that Ryback he's you know one tough competitor definitely has a target on his back and well it looks like the Big Show he wants a piece of the big guy and Big Show and Ryback do have their history with each other mind you at the Royal Rumble Big Show challenged Ryback for the Intercontinental Championship and well he was he was swiftly defeated by the big guy so it looks like Big Show perhaps maybe he just hasn't let that loss go or Maybe he just wants to try to make a name for himself over on the Raw brand. That could be a possibility. <sighs> and I apologize for the pauses, folks, but right now my I'm just ugh, my nose is really bugging me, so I had to get some tissues. I apologize for that. Uh, so if you just kind of hear these long pauses in the video, that is why. I do apologize, but um, nonetheless, I can still power through this to get this commentary going as Ryback takes Del Rio down here. But yes, that attack from Big Show definitely could have an effect on this matchup as it's going to have uh, weakened Ryback, perhaps. Ryback definitely taking some heavy damage from the Big Show. As look at this, though. Ryback, he seems almost unfazed as he takes Del Rio down with that shoulder switch power slam. And Ryback now driving the elbows into the shoulders of Alberto Del Rio. And Ryback, he is just relentless at this point. I mean, really, that, that attack from Big Show almost didn't even seem to slow him down. Still continuing to go on the assault, but now it's Del Rio who managed to counter. And now he's targeting the arm of Ryback. Try to soften him up for the cross arm breaker, perhaps. And now a German suplex from Del Rio. As now he's dragging Ryback away from the ropes. Perhaps looking to go back after the arm. Oh, what a stomp, right right on the back of the elbow of Ryback. Eesh, that definitely can mess you up for good. 
as Del Rio now takes him down with a belly to belly, and now a kick to the lower spine of Ryback. And if it's not his submission holds, Del Rio, you know, the, his next dangerous thing in his arsenal would have to be those vicious kicks. But Ryback, he was able to counter, and now has momentum back in his corner. He was looking for the meat hook clothesline, perhaps, but Del Rio countered it with that total world backbreaker. And now Del Rio, oh, what a springboard! And I, he might have just landed on the lower back of Ryback, but either way, that was not pretty. I don't think either of these men came out uh, came out any better on that one. Del Rio might have even done more damage to himself than he did to Ryback. And that's why they call it high-risk offense. But nonetheless, Del Rio still trying to keep on the offensive as he took Ryback down with a vertical suplex. And now he's got him in a headlock, but Ryback just sweeps Del Rio down on the match. Just completely kicked his legs out from underneath him. But again, Del Rio with another one of those big kicks. And again, back to the arm. Definitely Del Rio's trademark, but Ryback, he's back to his feet. And Ryback, well, he's looking to fire up his second wind right now as he completely knocks Del Rio down there. Now delivers a clothesline, ducks a clothesline from Del Rio, and now back body drop. Oh, but Del Rio, you're not gonna like this view. Spine buster from Ryback. Double A spine buster as he goes into the cover. Two count, and that is it, folks, Del Rio. He was no match for Ryback here tonight. And despite the attack from the big show, Ryback still powers through it and manages to pick up the victory in dominant fashion. I mean, Del Rio, he did get some offense in, but I mean, Ryback just, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Speaking of Rusev, look at this, Rusev from behind. Oh, but Ryback, Ryback manages to shut down Rusev's assault. And now it's Rusev who's on the receiving end of a beating from Ryback as Ryback takes him down as Ryback. Well, he's looking for a fight. He's ready to fight Rusev here. As, look at this, both men looking to perhaps struggle for power here. Oh, but Rusev, he's backing off. Are we gonna see the, are we gonna see these two men fight it out right now? Ryback's ready, he's saying to bring it on. Oh, but Rusev, no, 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 not just yet. Rusev, he wants, he's gonna fight. If he's gonna fight, it's gonna be on his terms. Rusev, perhaps making a wise decision here, exiting the ring and living to fight another day. But that is it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to stay tuned for more. And as always, like I said down, uh, like I said before, leave some comments about some tag team names and any other feedback you have on this episode. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on YouTubing.